Fyodor Kichuk was a highly influential and creative Soviet animator and film director, whose directorial career lasted from the early 1960s to the mid-80s. Kichuk was part of a wave of filmmakers that moved Soviet animation away from Disney-inspired children's fare towards more adult themes and avant-garde experimentation. However, there was a great deal of variety in his filmography, which includes silly short films for kids, as well as satires of bureaucracy and crime. He started working as an animator on Soviet films as early as 1938. His most notable credit is 1957's The Snow Queen, which was the most popular and important Soviet animated film during the height of the traditional Disney-influenced era. His first film as director was Story of One Crime from 1962, and right off the bat he debuts with an award-winning and seminal short. Unlike the fairy tale adaptations that had been so popular in Soviet animation in preceding decades, this had a contemporary setting. Story of One Crime was definitely not intended for kids, as it's a Dostoevsky-esque psychological examination of what leads a man to murder. It begins with a clerk beating two women to death with a frying pan, and then flashes back to show what led him to such extreme behavior. We see that the killer was kept up all night by various loud and inconsiderate neighbors. The short was released during a period in Soviet history known as the Khrushchev Thaw, named after USSR leader Nikita Khrushchev, whose time in office was known for a reduction in censorship and repression. Such a critique of society would not have been allowed under Stalin, the previous Soviet leader. The short was also a drastic change stylistically, with a much more flat, minimal style than the realism and naturalism that was found in the Disney-inspired earlier animation. There are few extraneous details, and backgrounds are often very basic or just one solid color. Movements of characters are abrupt, rather than fluid as in Disney films. Story of One Crime was not trying to mimic live-action cinema, but instead made choices that could work only in animation. However, the short does use real live-action footage on a television set, and Keytrick would use similar techniques later in his career. While there are some voices heard over the radio, there's no traditional dialogue, and music is used when the characters speak. Keytrick's work often had limited or no dialogue. Story of One Crime was perhaps the most influential of a wave of Soviet animation in the early 60s that made many of these traits common and permanently moved away from Disney's shadow. Keytrick directed animation for children as well, like his 1965 short Boniface's Vacation. The short uses a simple style to tell a simple story of a circus lion going on vacation to Africa. Again, Keytrick utilizes rather flat-looking imagery, pure colors as background, and avoids superfluous details. Throughout his career, Keytrick would freely go back and forth from kid stuff to more mature subject matter, as seen in his next short film, The Man in the Frame. Like Story of One Crime, it was also a dialogue-free societal satire, with a focus this time on bureaucracy. A bureaucrat's narrow view on the world is represented by a literal frame he makes for himself to exist in. Eventually, the frames multiply over and over until he is trapped in an endless set of boxes. Here, Keytrick completely abandons representing reality, and the film is almost entirely metaphorical. He presents a very flat world, with little depth and no attempt to recreate a three-dimensional space. Also, like in Story of One Crime, Keytrick combines art forms by using real tinted photos. Keytrick released another social satire in 1968, with Film Film Film, a parody of the film production industry in the Soviet Union. Similarly to The Man in the Frame, it partly deals with the bureaucracy when it shows several different officials censoring the script and later demanding a change to the ending after it's already filmed. However, it's a much more light-hearted film with lots of silly gags. It fits in with the usual Keytrick style as there's no dialogue and minimalist environments. Keytrick's most popular animation is his three adorable shorts based on A. A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh character. The Soviet version is much different from the Disney versions that were also being made starting in the 1960s in both style and content. As opposed to the polished Disney films, the environments look like they were drawn by children, and the shorts have an intentionally crude look. Winnie the Pooh's personality is markedly different from the American version, mainly due to being way more energetic here. Keytrick's Pooh also looks nothing like his American counterpart and is missing his iconic red shirt. There's no Christopher Robin in this adaptation, and Piglet is the second most important character. Eeyore is absent from the first two films, but shows up in the third. Next, we come to another satire with a simple story called The Island. 
that was selected as the best short film at the Cannes Film Festival. Similarly to Story of One Crime, it depicts an uncaring society where a man stranded on an island is left on his own to survive despite numerous visitors, such as a priest, the military, and an anthropologist, where they all only care about using the man or the island for their own ends, and no one helps them. Keetrick's final film as director was the anti-war parable The Lion and the Ox, released in 1984. It has no dialogue and represents the Cold War, with the title characters representing the U.S. and the Soviet Union. This is definitely one of Keetrick's more serious films, and has a sad, poignant ending. Despite having certain trademarks, Keetrick's animation still varied visually, and this film was no exception as it has a very unique look among his filmography. Keetrick passed away in 2012 and left behind a highly creative and underappreciated body of work. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.